Welcome back to EC 441A, 541A. We are getting near the end of the semester and we may have a few more homework assignments due before or after homework number eight. Homework, homework number eight is due on Friday and pay attention or just remember that the D2L website sometimes gets a little ornery near midnight which is I think the drop box deadline on Fridays. Office hours for this week I have another commitment normally we would have office hours at 11 to noon on Thursday. I'm going to slide those later in the day to 2 to 3 on Thursday if you would like to see me during office hours. Lab number three is due as well as the project on Sunday. The write-up, obviously you won't be able to get into the lab on Sunday, so you might try to schedule time this week to get into the lab to finish up lab number three. And if you need some review material on Bode plots, that should be available on D2L teacher course evaluations. I think you've received emails for that. I do welcome your input there. And the final exam is two weeks from this Wednesday. And it will begin at 8 a.m. What we're doing now is we are going into, again, controller design, but now we're using a different instrument with which to use in order to create these controllers and the instrument that we're using now is the frequency response or Bode plots and we're trying to shape those Bode plots to give us the stability margins that we want and stability margins are phase margin and gain margin and we're trying to manipulate depending on what we have for our design specifications we want to determine how to shape the magnitude and or the phase curve of the frequency response to achieve the desired goal which is usually some phase margin specification and that phase margin specification will typically be accompanied by another requirement that might say oh I really need to not slow down the system or I don't care if the system the speed of response is modified or adjusted. That's this when question that we will address on the phase lag control or what and then what conceptually is going on. What are we adjusting in the magnitude and phase curve to achieve the design spec that we want and then we'll, since it's near the holiday season, we'll give a recipe. And hopefully you brought your ingredients, which for your case is a pencil and paper, but you'll want to write down those, the recipe, so that you can follow it to achieve the desired result, which is the phase margin specification for a phase lag control. I don't know if we will get to an example but I may do that after the lecture sometime and post that on D2L. I don't know. We're squeezing a lot into this last piece of the semester. And then we will get into phase lead controller design. Here's our phase lag controller with the Bode plot. And when you think of phase lag controller, you might just picture this S-plane plot to remind you of what's happening with the poles and zeros. Our controllers in this class typically consist of one pole and one zero. And it really depends on where you put that zero relative to the pole, whether you're talking about a phase lead or a phase lag. Phase lag controllers are usually trying to enhance the steady state accuracy which we're really playing on this spacing between the pole and the zero, but the pole and the zero are both very close to the origin in a phase lag controller. And the pole is closer to the imaginary axis than the zero, 
And in one particular phase lag controller, the PI controller, the pole is right at the origin. It has that pure integrator effect. And what does that do to the system type, a PI controller? It increases our system type by one. It introduces one more pole right at the origin, and we may want that to achieve or accomplish our steady state accuracy specification. Here's what we want to do in terms of understanding. If somebody now says we have a phase lag controller, or we're using a phase lag controller, what that really a lot of times means is we can tolerate the system being slowed down. We can tolerate a slower system. By that we're meaning it might not get to its final value as quickly. Its peak time may be slower or s extended in duration. And if we can tolerate a slower system, a slower system actually corresponds or correlates to where the magnitude curve crosses the imaginary or the frequency axis. The further out in frequency that we cross zero dB with our magnitude curve, the faster our system responds. If we can now tolerate a slower system, we can actually reduce the gain earlier on in the frequency so that the gain crossover point is reduced in frequency. We can reduce the gain crossover frequency. If we're talking about implementing a phase lag controller, but to really sort of set the stage for where the magnitude curve is to begin with is usually based on our steady state accuracy specification which means we need to preset the gain value. In our root locus we sort of set the gain at the end. We found the desired poles and then we adjusted the gain to get us to those desired poles. In the Bode plot design we sort of flip that we say what's our gain value and fix that up front and then worry about shaping things in terms of placing poles and zeros later. So the very first thing that you're doing when you do a Bode plot or frequency response design is you're typically looking at the magnitude plot or you're selecting the gain in your system to meet a steady state air specification. I'm going to say then the magnitude of your transfer function in dB is adjusted to satisfy the steady state air condition. Or what that means is it actually sets the gain value K in your system G. If you don't have yet that gain specified, typically you pick that based on some steady state accuracy specification and that will become more clear maybe as we go through some examples. But now just assume that your original system numerator and denominator is fixed and now you can sketch its frequency response and you've sketched it and you get the following. You have a magnitude curve that looks like this and you have a gain curve and this gets a little tedious because I have to try to set these up to achieve what I want. So let me now say that there is my 0 dB line on the gain curve and now what I want to do is that what I want let me raise that up a little bit so that I can achieve a little bit of this is now my minus 180 degree line on the phase curve here's my phase of G 
and here is my magnitude. And I hope that you're comfortable sketching those. Here I'm just drawing some curves very quickly to illustrate the concept. The idea behind shaping the magnitude or phase curve to get the phase margin that we want. What is the phase margin right now of, your, of the system? Or what's required to determine the phase margin? Do you remember after this long recess, which really wasn't that long? Maybe it wasn't long enough, right? How do, what do we do to find the phase margin? Or if we're talking stability margins with the frequency response, what are we looking for with respect to those responses? There's Okay, we have two frequencies that we are interested in, aren't we? We have the gain crossover frequency, which is right here. We'll call that omega sub g. And we can then line up our magnitude curve and phase curve relative to that. And that's the really the crossover frequency that we need to determine our phase mark. The phase crossover would be right here. And that establishes our gain margin, how much we can increase the gain before it would go through 0 dB. But for this particular design, we're going, we will focus on the phase margin. And now that I've identified the gain crossover frequency, what's the phase margin? Or where do I find the phase margin in this diagram? It's hiding on this dashed line, isn't it? And it's, is it big or small? It looks kind of small, doesn't it? Here is our phase margin. And we will actually label this because we're actually going to have a beginning phase margin, which I'm going to call phase margin uncompensated. That's PM sub U. So let's say that our phase curve was minus 170, just for number's sake, when the gain crossed to 0 dB, then our phase margin is going to be 10 degrees. And that's maybe not sufficient. What we want maybe is 50 degrees of phase margin, which means if we would make our gain, this might be the place well, how do I want to say this? I'm going to introduce a fudge factor or a safety margin in this design process because of the fact that when we introduce poles and zeros and we use these straight line approximations, those are just approximations, meaning the phase is not necessarily going to be completely done contributing phase a decade beyond where it is located. It still is contributing some phase, and that's going to give rise to this phase or this safety margin in the design. What I'm saying then is let's say that my desired phase margin is 50 degrees. I'm going to up that a little bit knowing that I'm going to have, or I need a little safety factor in my design. So I might add 5 or 10 degrees to that and say, okay, I'm going to try to find a spot on my frequency phase plot where my phase margin would be 60 degrees if my magnitude curve went through 0 dB. Is that making sense? So I have a desired phase margin. And I introduce a safety margin in addition to that. And that now, let's say, puts us right here. This would be my phase margin of the compensated system. Maybe this is what I wanted for my actual 
phase margin, but this little extra piece is the phase margin. And now if I could make my magnitude curve actually cross 0 dB at that lower frequency, I would have my phase margin specification satisfied. I start with a phase margin that's not enough. Maybe it's 10 degrees. I say I need 50 degrees. I, I know that I'm going to need a little bit more than that, so I bump it up and say, oh, let's make it 60 degrees for this safety margin. And now I find the point that's 60 degrees more positive than minus 180, so it's now minus 120, and I say, what frequency does that occur? That's now where I want my gain curve to cross 0 dB. If that's the case, what I need to do is I need to actually attenuate my gain curve by that amount at that frequency spot. This is actually the attenuation that my controller now needs to introduce. This is now the attenuation needed in the design. That's the concept. We want to adjust our magnitude curve so that it gets slowed down. We move the crossover frequency to a lower frequency which means we want to somehow bend the magnitude curve so that it does cross 0 dB at this new crossover frequency, which I'm not sure my notation. This we will call the new crossover frequency, omega sub c prime. We now want our magnitude curve, when we've compensated it, when we've introduced our pole and zero, we want it to go through that frequency or 0 dB at that frequency. That's the idea. Now, how do we modify or how do we drop the magnitude curve? We're now introducing a controller, that's G sub C, which we will add into G, but we now want that combination to cross 0 dB at this new crossover frequency, omega sub C prime. If we want the magnitude to be down, at omega sub c prime, what do you know about poles and zeros and their impact on the magnitude curve that might allow that to happen? What makes the magnitude curve go down? Poles. So we need to put a pole in there earlier to bring the, to attenuate the magnitude. But if we put a pole in, what does that do to our phase curve? What does a pole do to our phase? Add, add angle or subtract angle? Where is that pole in our transfer function? Located. Upstairs or downstairs? Downstairs. So it's giving us negative angles, isn't it? If we just introduced a pole, that would lower our magnitude curve, but it would also change our phase curve, and that's not what we want, is it? So we need to introduce a zero to counteract the effect of the introduction of the pole. And we have to do it in such a way. What we want to do is we want to introduce a pole to bring this down. But then we want to kick in a zero so that it now crosses right there. And the effect of those two, this is going to start a decade before, and then we'll kick in our zero. And what we want is for this to be back to where it's basically not impacting our phase curve at the 
frequency omega sub c prime. The red is now our compensated response, and this is right here the reason why we have our safety margin. In order to drop the magnitude, what we want to do is introduce a pole zero combination. And which one did we put first in frequency. We introduce the pole first, that drops us down, and what we wanted to do though is realize that we don't want to change the phase curve near our new gain crossover frequency omega sub c prime. So we don't want to change the phase curve near omega sub c prime. Our strategy then is basically two steps. We place the controller zero first in our design. After we've adjusted the gain, we place the controller zero a decade before, I should say, instead of below, before in, in frequency, a decade before omega sub c prone. Which means that the zero location in our controller z, we've identified omega sub c prime on our frequency response. We just divide that by 10 and that's where we will place our zero. Once we've placed our zero, we now can go back further in frequency to place our pole and the separation between the pole and the zero will influence how much attenuation we actually achieve. Because the longer we leave that pole without the zero, the more we're going to go down, we're, the more we're, we are attenuating our magnitude curve. And for that reason, then, the separation, the controller pole, is at a lower frequency or it breaks sooner than the controller zero. And this separation between the pole and the zero, the pole zero separation, is determined by how much attenuation we actually need to introduce to make the magnitude curve cross zero dB at omega sub c prime. Are you ready to go cook? Are you ready to bake with this phase lag controller? I just sort of talked about it, didn't I? I didn't, I, if I was, let's see, I don't even know some famous cooks, but if I was a famous cook, I'd just be talking and throwing ingredients around and say, there it is. And you'd be going, wow, that was nice, but I don't know how I could reproduce that. So let's get a recipe so that you can basically do what we conceptually outlined now. So that you can follow this recipe and then you can go back and you can go, Oh, that's what we were doing, is just this basic two-step process. Julia Childs, that's who I was thinking of, but that's probably way before your time. Oh, we have a chicken here. 
So now we have a pole and we have a zero and we're going to put them in the pot and hopefully they will come out tasting very nicely. Okay. May she rest in peace. Let's, <laughs> let's move on here. There was a movie out, wasn't there, with her on it? All right, so maybe you guys know who I'm talking about. First, let's just remind ourselves of what we're playing with. We're trying to construct this controller, and we've already put the gain in play. So the gain is associated with our plant G now, and all we're playing with are these the pole and the zero of the controller. And we will introduce this controller in time constant form so that we don't adjust the gain that we've already established at low frequencies. At low frequencies, what's the gain of this transfer function? One. We set s to zero and we have one over one. So that's good. And what you may be thinking though is I want this to be expressed in terms of poles and zeros. That's what we just found in our recipe, a z value and we'll find a p value but you can relate those to this time constant tau and this separation variable alpha by simply equating the coefficients scaling the s variable. So that here our zero is related to the time constant by one over tau and our pole which is at minus p, is minus 1 over alpha tau, which is really just mi minus c over alpha. That's our pole zero separation. Let's now look at this recipe. writing recipe. I'll call it a procedure. I've, all I can think about now is Julia Childs. But now if you think of that relative to phase lag controller, you'll go, oh yes, Julia Childs. Write that on your final and I'll give you a point. Okay? If I say design a controller and I don't tell you which one to design, and it actually needs to be a phase lag, and you just write Julia, I'll give you a point. How's that? Because that's better. I don't know who we're going to associate with the phase lead, so I'll have to come up with something in a minute. But here we have the phase lag controller. The very first step is we determine the gain in our system necessary to achieve the specified steady state accuracy. That might be I want a error of 0.1 when I put in a step and that will then determine what your K value is. You'll use that K together with your system's poles and zeros to plot what I will call the uncompensated because it doesn't yet contain the poles and zeros of our compensator. Plot the uncompensated Bode plots using the gain that we just determined in step one. And that you need to be able to do is sketch the Bode plot. 
Once you've done that, then before break, we learned how to determine our stability margins from a Bode flaw. So now what you want to do is determine the phase margin for, again, what I'm calling this uncompensated system. It's really been compensated a little bit because we've already specified the gain. But the phase margin that I will use just to keep all these different phase margins straight, I will call that phase margin uncompensated. PM sub U. Find that from your Bode plot that you just sketched. Now here's some logic. If the phase margin uncompensated is sufficient. Let's say that you wanted 40 degrees phase margin and you sketch it and you go, ha ah, my phase margin is 45 degrees. You're done. You don't have to even place any poles and zeros in the pot. Your turkey's finished just by picking the gain K. So if phase margin uncompensated is sufficient, No phase lag compensator is needed. And you can stop. You've done all you need to do for this system and this particular specification by selecting the gain K. Now, that may be what happens on the final. I might mess up and just give you a system where all you have to do is select the gain K. But if not, you need to go to the next step, which if I'm counting properly is step four. So now we've sketched this and we needed a phase margin of 40 degrees and our uncompensated phase margin is 20. And we go, ugh, it's not going to cut it. Now what we need to do is we need to determine the frequency omega sub c prime where the desired phase margin plus a safety margin would be met if the gain curve Cross 0 dB or cross, let's say, the 0 dB line at omega sub c prime. If you're looking for a formula, you could say that my phase margin desired plus this safety margin where the safety margin might be 5 or 10 degrees, that's what you're using. This is what I was calling in the conceptual piece, this phase margin compensator, PMC. That's maybe 40 degrees plus 5 or 40 degrees plus 10. Once we found omega sub c prime, we can immediately find our zero because we locate that a decade below omega sub c prime. So place a zero a decade below the desired crossover frequency omega sub c prime determined in step four. 
and a decade is just a factor of 10. Z is this 1 over tau, but we now know what omega sub C prime is. We just divide it by 10, and that's our zero. That's easy. Once you've found omega sub C prime, then finding Z is trivial, the zero location. Now what you need to do is figure out how do we bend our magnitude curve the appropriate amount. How do we drop it down? How much attenuation do we need? And that's going to be influenced by how far back or how much lower in frequency the pole is than the zero. We fixed to the zero now. Now what we want to do is calculate the pole zero separation. using the amount of attenuation needed to cause the magnitude curve to cross the zero dB line at omega sub c prime. If we remember way back here, I'm now saying this is what we're asking. There's the attenuation we need to happen by the appropriate location or separation of our pole and zero. That's the amount we need our magnitude to draw. And we can write down or derive a relationship. We know that minus 20 log of the pole zero separation, this alpha, is going to be equal to the attenuation that we needed. And this attenuation is actually going to be a negative number, and it's in dB in terms of units. We want alpha. We know what the attenuation needed is. Maybe that's minus 50 dB. That's now this attenuation number that I'm going to refer to, and I can simply now solve for alpha or do the inverse log. I divide by minus 20 on both sides. I take the anti-log of both sides, which is raising everything or raising 10 to the appropriate power, and I now have alpha. Alpha is now going to be 10 to the minus, well, let me not do that. Let me just say the attenuation is already negative. So now I have this attenuation divided by minus 20. And that's now my alpha. You've now basically designed your controller and you just need to check it. In step 7, you can now calculate compensator pole location using the value of alpha found in step six, where P is the zero location divided by alpha or z was 1 over tau, and we're just dividing z by alpha. Or if you remember what z was, that was this omega sub c prime divided by 10, 
and again we're dividing that by alpha to obtain P. And that gives us then this phase lag controller Since we found Z, we've now computed P, and that's now our controller, G sub C. On an exam, you would stop there. But in reality, you would need to check to see, is this actually going to satisfy my design specifications? So you would draw the compensated Bode plot, which is really just another way of saying get out MATLAB and add in the compensator and see what happens. Draw the compensated Bode plot, which is now you're looking at G sub C of J omega and G of J omega. You can now find the phase margin for this compensated system. Is it large enough? If yes, then again you can stop. If it's not quite enough, or it's no, then you can actually move your gain crossover frequency even lower. So you make omega sub C prime even less than what it was before. So let's just now say decrease omega sub C prime, which another way of saying that would be to increase the safety margin in step four. That's really what you're doing by sliding that back and then go to step five. Now, has the internal temperature reached 160 degrees or whatever it needs to reach in order to pull this out of the oven? So it's not too well done, but it's just right. Let's look at an example and see if this will help your understanding of this process of creating a phase lag controller using the Bode plot. Suppose somebody gives you a system, G of S, that's now 10K over S, 0, .0, whoops, 0 0.1 S plus 1 and 0 0.05 S plus 1. I know this is in time constant form, but do you see the pole zero diagram for this? Or I could ask you all sorts of questions. Where would your phase curve begin at low frequencies in this system? What's your phase at low frequency? Minus 90, because you have that pole at the origin. What's your phase at high frequency? What's your pole zero excess? How many poles do you have? Three. How many zeros? None. So your pole zero excess is three. Each of those three poles contributes 90 degrees. And it's poles, so those are minus 90 degrees. We have three times minus 90 or minus 270. That's where we will end up. So we are crossing this minus 180 point. Suppose now that this is your system and somebody says, here are my design specs. First, I want the steady state air due to a ramp, because what's the steady state air due to a constant? If your system is stable, if you can stabilize this system by the choice of gain K, and here, where's 
you've got a pole at the origin. Where are your other two poles? Minus 10 and minus 20. And now you can start to see this root locus diagram. You could stabilize this system without too big of a K. If K is small, you can stabilize this system. If you've now stabilized this system, what's your steady state air due to a constant? Zero. Because of that, it's a type 1 system. You have one pure integrated, one pole at the origin. So now I'm saying we want a finite value for the air when we introduce a ramp, and we want that to be less than or equal to 0 0.033, where the 3 just continues. That's one specification. The other design specification is we want a phase margin greater than or equal to 30 degrees. Those are our two design specifications. Now from our steady state air specification, that's actually related to 1 over the velocity gain constant. We haven't really talked too much about these, but K sub V is what you find from your open loop plant G. If you went and found your steady state air formula, you would see that you could, for a generic system, say, oh, my steady state air is 1 over K sub V, and you have a K sub V if you have a type 1 system. So this is now what we have, and we want that to be less than or equal to this 0 0.033. We have one equation and one unknown. We can solve for k sub v. This now says that we want k sub v to be bigger than or equal to 1 over 0 0.033, which is 30. And the velocity gain constant is found from our system by looking at what happens when we basically get rid of that pole at the origin and just look at the gain that's left in our system. We now multiply that by S. We've canceled the pole at the origin. And let S in, let, by letting S go to zero, what happens to that expression? We've canceled the S at the origin, and now we let S go to zero. What are we left with? We have ones downstairs, don't we? And upstairs we have 10K. So this now becomes 10K, and we want that, let's say we just do it at the nominal value of K sub V. That's now 30, or we now know what K is in our open loop system, we want k to be 3. That's step one of this whole design process of the recipe. The second step is now to plot the Bode plot. That's now 10 times 3 all over s times 0.1s plus 1 and 0.05s plus 1. If we were doing this in MATLAB, we might want to just multiply that out so that we now have a second order, which we can then multiply by this first order. We have 0.1s squared plus 1s plus 0. That's now the first term. If we do that, which I did right before class, here's what commands I entered. I put in a numerator of 30. That's 10 times 3. And the denominator, I convolved 
comma 1 comma 0 with 0 0.051, built up my transfer function and sketched the Bode plot, and this is what results. What's my phase margin uncompensated? What are you looking for? What's the gain crossover frequency? Is it 1? Is it 10? Is it 100? Which one is closest? It's closer to 10, isn't it? The gain crossover frequency, which I can't really point to, I need a laser pointer, but now if I go here and somehow That's where we're after, isn't it? We'll look at that, and I may do this after the fact since we're out of time, but from that, we know that we have to increase it because we wanted 30 degrees of phase margin. And if you look at what happens near that point, it's almost right at minus 180. So our phase margin uncompensated is too small. We need to introduce a pole and a zero. We'll pick up somewhere after this on Wednesday.